What's up YouTube, this is JP Panther back with a video and today's video is going to be my phase 3 best to worst ranking video and this is going to be it and this will be the wrap up of the phase 3 movies and to make sure that I, I got everything right I actually wrote it down so I would you know make sure that you know got things right so what I do talk about is that you know what I'm talking about and actually write and really think and analyze before I go when I do these videos and stuff like that. So let's get into it. Eleven, It's 11 phase 3 movies, which is crazy. And one phase, is, this is the longest phase. And we're getting into it right now. That's just my phone right there. Uh, we're going to get into it right now. So uh, the out of the out of the phase 3 lineup, this is obviously the worst to best. And I'm going to start off with the worst out of the phase 3. Doctor Strange. I like Doctor Strange as a character, but his origin movie was kind of like whatever. Like, it was just, you know, him, it was a typical origin story. You know, he gets, you know, he's he's rich, he gets hurt, uh, he can't use his uh, hands, and then he can do it by doing the sorcerer stuff and all that. Then he meets with the monks and stuff like that, and then he fights Dumamu. And again, I, I think Doctor Strange is one of the worst uh, movies in Phase 3, in my personal opinion. Again... I thought his origin story, it's not the worst movie ever, but it's just not a, it's not that good. It's just whatever. You know what I mean? Like, you could take it or leave it. It's your typical generic origin story. And I do hope Doctor Strange 2, the multi-universe of badness, is way better than the first one in my personal opinion. But as an origin story, it's okay. It's just not my best. It, to me, it's not my favorite uh, movie in the Phase 3. Or just movies in general. It's okay, but you know, it's just not amazing. So number 10 is going to be Ant-Man and Wasp. Again, I enjoy Ant-Man and Wasp, but I just felt like this movie was made specifically for... It, to me, this movie literally comes out after Infinity War. And it just feels like... Uh, it's First of all, it just feels like kind of a waste of time. It's him and the Wasp. He's arrested because I guess after Civil War, he gets locked up and stuff like that. He's on house arrest. Then they're trying to find ghosts, and then you find out ghosts is a woman and stuff like that. And it's just, you know, they're trying to, you know, find ghosts and trying to use the quantum realm and stuff like that. And again, it's made after Infinity War. And the thing is with Ant-Man and Wasp, I enjoyed the movie. It's a fun family movie. But to me, it feels like unnecessary. Like besides, okay, the last post credit scene, the movie's pretty much pointless because... The whole purpose of the movie is that, okay, we're going to use this machine, the Quantum Realm, to go back in time and undo everything Thanos does. So that's pretty much the purpose of the movie. And again, the movie's enjoyable. It's just not like something I think is the best, best movie. I thought it was enjoyable, but yeah, a good family movie after Infinity War, but it's kind of like, hmm, whatever. Um, so after that, it's going to be Guardian Galaxy. Number nine is going to be Guardian Galaxy 2. Guardian Galaxy 2, I really, I, Guardian Galaxy, the first one I really liked, the second one, I'm just like, it was too cartoony, it felt like a Looney Tunes cartoon, and the thing is with the planet, with Ego, and his father, and Quill, and you know, it's just them kind of going all over the place, and it just felt very cartoony and Looney Tunes-ish, I mean, I get, again, the first one was kind of like that too, but, the second one, they really OD with the Marvel humor. Like, you could just tell the Marvel formula. And it's just, you know, it just feels like a Looney Tunes cartoon. Again, it's not a bad movie out of the Guardian movies. I said the first one's like an A. I say the first Guardian Galaxy is like an A plus in my first opinion. The second one, this one is kind of like a B minus. That's what it is. It's not a bad movie, but it's kind of like, all right, it's, you know, it's whatever, you know. So whatever, that's really it. And it's cool that, you know, you have the post credit scene with Adam Warlock and stuff like that. But overall, it's whatever. And then uh, number eight is Spider-Man Homecoming. I liked Spider-Man Homecoming, guys. I really enjoyed it. But the problem is with this movie, it's just... Um, the problem with Spider-Man Far From... Spar no, Far From... Spider-Man Homecoming, it's just like, okay... I liked the movie, I enjoyed it, but the pr there's issues and flaws with it where it's just like, okay... When you watch him in Civil War, Infinity War, Endgame, that felt like Spider-Man from the comics. When you watch him in Homecoming, even Far From Home, it just feels like Iron Boy Jr. And again, it's the problem is we have so many Spider-Man movies. We had Tobey Maguire, we had Andrew Garfield, and we just got a we got Tom Holland. So it's kind of like, all right, it's cool, but again, we don't. It's not a movie you have to necessarily see. You feel me? You could just skip this movie and go straight to like Thor Ragnarok or Avengers: Infinity War. 
This is just kind of rehashing the stuff we already know. But one of the things I did like about Homecoming, like all the uh, compared to all the other Spider-Man, they didn't have to tell us, oh, it's he gets bit by a radioactive spider. He's a teenager. It just kind of like throws us in there. And again, I like Homecoming. I really enjoyed it. I give it like a B. You know, uh, Homecoming is like a B. But again, it's not a bad movie. It, you know, it's enjoyable. But the problem is we just see Spider-Man was so oversaturated. It's kind of like we get Homecoming. It's kind of like... Oh, okay, whatever. And Vulture was a pretty good villain, but again, he's not memorable. You know, everyone kind of forgot about Michael Keaton's uh, Vulture real quick. So, that's the main thing. So, that's really it for Homecoming. And I want to get into number seven is Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, I enjoyed her movie. Uh, I give her... I give, I, I give her like an 8 out of 10. I think her movie has some problems. I think the movie comes out a month before Endgame. And it shows you that this is a character that can't hold her own. It shows you that you have to put her movie one month before Endgame to make people be like, oh, if you want to see what happens in Endgame, you got to see Captain Marvel. And Captain Marvel, I enjoyed, but the problem is it just felt like it was rushed. It felt like you just threw her at the last minute. You could tell they just took a, their first draft and put her in there as their first female lead and again it didn't feel like the problem with captain marvel was that it didn't feel like a superhero movie it felt like a feminist movie and even the directors came out and the producer came out and said captain marvel is a feminist film and when you watch captain marvel you could tell because the main bad guy is pretty much trump uh the kree warriors are pretty much trump supporters and border guard members the scrolls are pretty much illegal aliens illegal immigrants from a different space so again and captain marvel is this great white feminist superman savior type character and again i enjoy the movie but to me it has its problems so captain marvel that's why i give her a number seven you know and again i enjoy the movie but it's not like something that blows you out the way so okay so number six is spider-man far from home the reason why i like spider-man far from home guys in my pro opinion is because it was coming after Avengers Endgame. It was good to have something that kind of calmed us down. You know, something... I thought Far From Home was better than Homecoming, in my personal opinion. You had Mysterio, who was a really good villain. Jake Hall did a great, great job. I really thought uh, Tom Holland did a great job with his performance and things like that. And how he has to pretty much be the last... He's technically the only Avenger, technically, that's around. Because all the Avengers, they're there, but they're all separated and doing their own things. And in my personal opinion, I thought Tom Holland did a great, great job. And I did like Mysterio, Jake Gyllenhaal as a villain because his whole entire goal was to take Tony Stark's tech, use it against him, and uh, create another Avengers-type threat and become the hero and trick everybody. And his whole entire goal really was to have himself get killed and expose Peter Parker's identity to the world. So now everyone's going to try to kill him in Spider-Man 3. And now he has a whole identity crisis. So that's one. And also Jake Jones was just a great villain in my personal opinion. And that's, you know, I mean, uh, for Far From Home, I thought it was really good. I thought it was enjoyable. And I thought it was really, really good coming after Endgame. So number five is going to be Thor Ragnarok. Again, I enjoyed Thor Ragnarok. I think Thor, I thought Thor Ragnarok was an 8.5 out of 10. It's not Ragnarok from the comics, but I really, really enjoyed it. I did like how the problem with the, the problem with Ragnarok it was just too. They OD with the Marvel humor. Like the problem is that it was really good, and enjoyable at the moment. It was really funny and laugh out loud at the moment, but it's Marvel funny. You feel me? You can't if you go back and watch that movie now. The jokes aren't as funny because you kind of know what's gonna happen. It's the typical hot Marvel humor at the last at the the moment you watch it and then after that it kind of just cruises away so again Thor Ragnarok was more like a Kevin Hart movie than a Ragnarok Thor, Thor Ragnarok type movie it's supposed to be the end of days and everybody is laugh you know I mean it's all comedy pretty much and Hela was kind of wasted as a villain and in my personal opinion, I understand why they did it because Thor, Thor the Dark World was so bad and garbage that they're trying to be like, okay, instead of having this dark, demonic, Zack Snyder, you know, godlike character, let's lighten him up and just make him like a Kevin Hart type character. Let's make him straight comedy like. So I get why they did it, but honestly, Ragnarok I thought was a really good movie, but again, the jokes just don't hit as much when you re watch it again the second time and i own the ragnarok so on blu-ray and stuff like that so i'm telling you from my perspective 
And then number four is Civil War. I thought Civil War was amazing. In my personal opinion, people were very mixed with it because, you know, if people were saying it felt like Batman versus Superman, how they just put it at the last minute. And in my personal opinion, I like Captain America Civil War. I thought it was really, really good. I did like how we got to see Black Panther, Spider-Man, how the whole purpose of the movie of Civil War was that the Avengers were split. You know, and it shows you that if the Avengers were together, you wouldn't have all these issues. And I did like how they put Captain America Civil War during the 2016 presidential election when we had, you know, Hillary and, you know, Trump and Bernie and all the presidential candidates. You put it out at a very strategic political, ec political economic time when we're going through all those issues in 2016. So Captain America Civil War, I really enjoyed it. It was really a smart strategic move to put it. Uh, after Batman vs Superman and you put it out the 2016 presidential election year and stuff like that so again I enjoyed Civil War I really liked the fights I did like how Baron Zemo did all this to uh, to show you that Winter Soldier is the one who killed uh, his parents and Captain America and Bucky Captain America and uh, Winter Soldier fight Iron Man and now the Avengers are split so I really like that concept and again I thought Civil War was probably a 9 out of 10 in my personal opinion Number three is Avengers Infinity War. I really liked Infinity War. The problem I have with Infinity War is that I thought it was really cool to see all these characters come together and fight Thanos, stuff like that. The only issue is that I have with Infinity War is that Infinity War felt too grounded. Infinity War felt like Sonic the Hedgehog treasure hunting. That's the main issue with Infinity War. And also, Thanos was way too sympathetic. It's like you're trying to... Like, Thanos was supposed to be this demonic savage... He's supposed to be that answer to Warner Brothers Dark Side, but he feels he's his whole goal is overpop wipe out half the population wipe out half the population so they can have the resources and so that, you know, he's trying to wipe out half the universe to save the universe. And again, he's way too sympathetic. And it's like, bro, I want you to be a demonic savage like you are in Endgame, but in Infinity War, he felt too grounded and too casual and stuff like that. I felt like he was made for the... I felt Avengers Infinity War felt more for the normies and popcorn movie fans. And Endgame felt like for the hardcore... If That movie was more for the hardcore comic book geek nerd fans like us, in my opinion. Like, you have two different type Thanos. And I did a video talking about the two Thanos and stuff like that. But overall, Avengers Infinity War, I like it. I thought it was an 8 out of 10. And it has its problems. Again, Thanos beats him, you know, he wipes out them out, and then he sits on his uh, porch and stuff like that. And that's pretty much it. And then, of course, Avengers Endgame sets up, sets up Avengers Endgame. And then number two is my favorite, Black Panther. I'm very biased. I don't care what anyone says. You see my swag. You see my gear. I thought Black Panther was a 10 out of 10 as a Marvel movie. I thought it was really good. It fixed a lot of problems like the villain. It, sh it was the best movie when it comes to female representation. Things like that. I think Black Panther did a better job with their female characters than Captain Marvel. Because the women were all powerful and strong and you know feminine and stuff like that. And it just felt really authentic. And it didn't have to tell you that we had strong women. We had strong this. And you had a villain that w you felt sympathetic towards. You feel me? Like you didn't agree his motive but you understand his worldview and stuff like that and it was the first black movie to hit a billion dollars and it was the first african-american movie that portrayed black people as you know in a positive godlike representation that no other african-american movies ever done so that's one of the reason why i get black panther 10 out of 10 and then my last movie is avengers endgame you already know why it's avengers endgame because it felt like a comic book movie it felt like comic book come to life i like how you have thanos starting the fourth grade ninja war then you had the avengers attacking him trying to blow up everything and i just love the fights i loved how they have to go back in time mess up the whole timeline thanos felt like xerath broly acnologia this whole entire goal was to grab the six stone and blow up the universe and iron man had to sacrifice himself in order to save the universe so in my personal opinion avengers endgame is number one it's a 10 out of 10 in my personal opinion because it was a comic book movie that came to life everything i've read in a comic book felt like it came to life in my personal opinion and that's just how i truly feel and i felt like this movie was made for us comic book fans and that's why i give avengers endgame a 10 out of 10 and that's my favorite movie probably of all time a favorite comic book movie of all time so that's really it guys that's my ranking let me know in the comment section below tell me what you guys think do you guys agree with me do you disagree with this list let me know in the comment section below rate and like the video and subscribe make sure you subscribe to this channel Peace and have a great day and take care.